I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's good, y'all? Charlie here's the most spoke, no joke, and I'm back again with a brand new video. And today, we're talking about day six of the Carolina Panthers training camp. The guys got a day off, but today they're back at it again with the pads on and the cops was out there. Not the police, but they had actual NFL officials come through and officiate practice. I'm pretty sure all 32 teams get a couple days where the officials show up. It's nothing too serious, but I guess it's kind of cool. I'm not really sure what the actual purpose of that is. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not really, it doesn't make any sense to me. But it is, I guess, a kind of cool thing to have the, uh, the players see the officials and they're out there and they do something. I'm not, I, look, I have no idea why it happens, but it's kind of cool. But we did see some pretty interesting things happen today in practice. I don't think anything all that, like, mind-blowing, but still some pretty newsworthy things. First off, Chris Hogan was back. He, uh, he hurt his back, and now he's back in practice. So that's really good to see because he, I think, is one of the guys in the wide receiver court who is still fighting for a job. We're looking at, you know, Aldrick Robinson have been having a few really good looks this year for this training camp, and he did drop a couple passes today, but he has had some really good plays where he's gotten past the defense, and he's made some, you know, he's made some of the coaches Really, really excited and really, you know, impressed. And on the other end, we see that Kevon Seymour, he's a guy who started to get the attention of the defensive coaches. Ross Cockle, he's still getting some really good quality, high volume looks playing safety. And we saw Rashawn Golden playing in the slot corner. Now, this might just really be what we're looking at here. We did see Rashawn Golden play some safety, but if Ross Cockle really is that guy for free safety, and I think he might be, it doesn't hurt anyone. To just admit, look, we might have been wrong about putting Rashawn Golden up there playing free safety, trying to move him from his spot he played in college and turn a nickel guy to an up top kind of dude. It's okay to say the experiment didn't really work the way he thought it would and we can bring him down to play in his natural position. That is the mark of maturity to not just get dug in and say, hey, we already told you guys all these uh, media reports, all these guys writing stories. We told you guys he is our free safety and that's what it's going to be. If it turns out that it's better for the team for Rashawn Golden to play in the slot, that's a win. That's a win. No hard feelings about none of that. No hard feelings about Marty Herney saying that the fans have forgotten about Rashawn Golden. Kind of salty about that one, or I was a little salty about that one a little bit early on a couple months ago. But honestly, this is a smart move. If, in fact, you know, it is Ross Conkle who becomes the better of the two at free safety. And if Rashawn Garner's is really good at nickel, it's a total win-win. Man, I got no problem with it. But let's go in order here because there are some really good stories. And to start off, Cam. Cam's back. Cam's throwing. And he was with the ones, obviously. And then we saw, look, we saw Kyle Allen getting some good time with the twos. We saw some stories about Will Greer. He kind of overthrew a couple of receivers today. But the biggest thing I keep seeing, the biggest thing I keep noticing in these reports, and I keep saying it because, I mean, I think I'm the only one who actually cares about this at this point. I'm pretty sure most of you guys watching these videos are like, yo, why does this guy keep bringing up Taylor Heineke? That guy is, what, what, what do I care about Taylor Heineke? But I have to keep reminding y'all that the coaches did say we would see these guys get some pretty even looks playing with the different levels of guys, playing with the ones, the twos, maybe even the threes. But keep it real, I've only heard about Kyle Allen and Will Greer getting time with the twos, getting any kind of significant, any kind of like noteworthy time with the twos. I haven't heard much news about Taylor Heineke at all. And I'm talking about looking through uh, Jordan Rodriguez, Bill Voth, which I think I've been pronouncing his name wrong for the better part of a year now. I've been saying Bill Voth. Is his name really Bill Voth? I, I think I watched, what was it, The Daily Thing with uh, Caroline Camp. I'm pretty sure I've been calling him Bill Voth for like 16 months now. Hey, that's on me. I've never heard his name actually said out loud before. Max Henson, uh, Jimmy Igo, all these guys. I'm missing a few guys. But none of them have been talking about Taylor Heineke really at all. Like, you might hear his name once or twice, but it's pretty obvious to me that these guys aren't getting equal time playing with the different levels of, you know, the, the scout teams or whatever. So... It's pretty clear the team's leaning very heavily to keeping Kyle Allen. I have no problem with that. I spent way too much time on this. Moving on. We saw some really good plays out of the defense at all levels, but mainly the back seven today. You don't really hear them call the back seven, but still the point is from the linebackers and the, uh, the defensive backs, 
I will say this about the linebackers though, Luke did get caught up in a pileup at the end of the play, took his helmet off, took a knee, and he got taken off, he got put to the uh, on the sideline, did not come back. I don't think he's hurt, but it's a very smart move for the team to say, look, if you got shaken up right here, bro, you, hey, hey, we got you tomorrow, maybe even the next day, I might get ultra conservative with, with Luke and say, look, your day is your, your day is Friday. We'll get you in for Fan Fest, my brother, but we really can't have you even hinting, even maybe possibly looking at getting hurt. We're going to save you for later on. We want exactly zero questions about Luke's health moving forward, going to the preseason, to the regular season. So that's a really, really smart move right there on the team's part. But getting on to some guys who are lesser known, Jaden Mickens, the guy we just picked up just last week or just a few days ago, we saw Chris Hogan, DJ Moore, and Terry Gowan even getting some looks at returning punts today. And look, that, that spot right there is going to determine just how many receivers we keep on the team. Now, if it's DJ Moore keeps the job, then we probably don't keep six receivers. I don't see us picking up a sixth guy, but if there's a guy who isn't knowing that top five position guys of, of our receivers, a guy like Mickens, a guy like uh, Rashad Ross, depending on how we build our roster up, I mean, I think I'd rather have five receivers and have an extra guy maybe on the D-line, maybe a linebacker, or maybe even a tight end who can like do different things on special teams, because we have positions of guys who might be a a little bit injury prone and you want to keep that other guy on the roster there rather than keeping six receivers and the sixth guy just being a punt return guy if it ends up being one of those fringe dudes. Now Mr. Sean Ross or you know maybe Audit Robinson or maybe even I don't want to say Terry Gall is a fringe guy but he kind of is in that same vein then I'm cool with him being the sixth but if it's someone like you know DJ or maybe Chris Hogan then we'll probably just go ahead and keep five. I don't see it being a big deal on that end. But this right here is big news. Actually the next two things I got for you are big news and you can rank them one and two, one A, one B, however you want to rank it. One thing that I did notice that after the training session they had, you know, they go talk to the media and whatnot and there are two things that were said, one by Coach Rivera and one by owner David Tepper that really got me looking. I was like, hold up, is that right? I'll start with Coach first. He was quoted saying that the goal is to cut down on Christian's plays, but we don't want to take away the touches. Now that might sound kind of like, wait, kind of in twenty eight, huh? Take away the plays, but don't take away the touches. What 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 that mean? Well, look at his snap count. Christian McCaffrey was on the field, as most of us know, for a ninety one point three percent of all snaps last year. He was on the field for nine hundred and sixty five offensive snaps. That's wild. So usually when we think about guys getting contact, guys getting you know wear and tear on their body, we think about their touches. And Christian did have about 365, no, 326 touches in 2018. 326 was the third most among running backs, and that is obviously the second biggest position for touches. Obviously the quarterbacks are number one. You don't get anywhere near 300 touches for receivers or whatever, so it's obviously running backs. But you have to also consider that there are some plays where he was blocking on the pass. There were some plays on read option or play action where he got hit even though he didn't get the ball in his hands. And there were other plays where he ran routes out the backfield or even in the slot where he got bumped, jammed, pressed, all that kind of stuff. So he was still getting contacted even on the plays where he wasn't actually touching the ball. So there's more contact than just those 326 plays, which is a Still a really big number, honestly. But my biggest question about this is, you know, it's smart to bring down his plays. You know, you don't want him getting too many hits on non-touching plays where he doesn't get the ball in his hand. But my biggest thing is, I've seen what a lot of teams, what's becoming the real big meta in the NFL, when you identify some really good running back talent in the first round, a lot of teams are doing the first four years, picking up that fifth year option, Franchise tag, franchise tag, you're seven years in the league, you're about 27, 28 years old, you get to negotiations and the team's like, I mean, you have 350, 375, 400 touch seasons, man. Look, you're 28, that's about the back end of a running back's career. We can keep you, but for this number way, way lower than what you've earned over the years. Now, look, I know we all love the Panthers, but the NFL is a business and the running back position is very, very much so devalued more and more every single year. And I would hate to see the team do Christian dirty the way that a lot of other teams have done their running backs. But on the other hand, you see guys like Todd Gurley, you see guys like Jordan Howard who get extended, but they either drop off the cliff like Jordan Howard or they get injured like Todd Gurley and you end up wondering to yourself, 
Should we really have paid those guys? But the other really intriguing thing here was something that David Tepper said, and I think we've all seen this talked about before, was he was talking about in 10 years, he would like to have a stadium with a retractable roof. Now, I've heard a couple different things here. I heard it was implied that he wants to put a retractable roof on the Bank of America Stadium that's already right here. And I've also heard that he wants to build a whole new stadium with a retractable roof, but he wants to keep it in Charlotte. So I'm not 100% sure which is the more, you know, which is the more reliable story, whether he wants to spend a bunch of money to put a retractable roof on B of A, or if he's thinking, you know, tear that down or do whatever with it, but build another stadium somewhere. Now, there's not a lot of space uptown. I think there's an area that's a bunch of uh, parking lots, but there's not a ton of, you know, open areas in Charlotte, like actually uptown. You might put it somewhere like on the suburbs. And we saw what hey, we saw what happened this summer where he basically pitted North Carolina and South Carolina against each other for the HQ for the Panthers. South Carolina gave him all that money. The lawmakers in South Carolina said, we'll give you these tax breaks. Now, I'm not saying that David Tepper is going to move the team to South Carolina. But I will say the headquarters and the practice facilities are already in South Carolina. No assumptions. I'm not implying anything, but I will tell you, at the end of the day, it's a business, and if it ain't making dollars, it ain't making sense. So the taxpayers or someone gotta come out in their pockets. David Tepper, he's worth, what, $11, $12 billion? And he still asked South Carolina for, what was it, $250 million in, 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 in tax breaks? This made it not get rich by throwing out money at every opportunity. The man got rich by making money at every opportunity and getting discounts. Yeah, he, this man is not too proud to ask for a coupon. So, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, I hope it's the first thing where he's talking about putting a trackable roof on B of A, and it's not that he's trying to build a brand new stadium because, number one, where it gonna go? And number two, who gonna pay for it? Either the taxpayers in Charlotte or Paul Meadow Moon. I don't know. That's all I got for you, though, man. What are your thoughts? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. I'll be back soon, man. And you already know what to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.